sir. Uh, so you're Jason Dawson, and you have been you as a you are retired professor from C yeah. CMS College, Kottayam. And now oldest college in India. Oldest college, oldest college in yeah. India. And uh, you are also a Dalit. Uh, and uh, you grew up to a stage of a professor level, and you retired, and now you are living to next to a serene houses. And so that, uh, and you also talk about Dalit, and you also talk about the caste. And uh, so that, could you explain us your biography, in the sense, your way of life, intellectual your political. intellectual political thing, how you grew up to this level, and how, is there a caste in it? Or there is a society where only merit and if you are qualified, you are accepted like that. So could you explain with your history of how the caste oppression was there? Yeah, my, my biography is the, the result of various histories. The history of uh, Christianity is there. The history of uh, anti caste struggle is there. The history of the emergence of the left is there. So it is a combination of uh, various uh, uh, histories which are bearing on contemporary Kerala. I, I grew up uh, just like uh, any other child in Kerala, in Central Kerala. I, 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 I don't think uh, it was sheer merit alone that counts in Kerala. There are various factors, the factors especially the factor of your identity is there. But still, Kerala is a society which uh, has become very sophisticated, which is uh, capable of speaking in the, 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 the latest terminology of uh, civilization and culture. Uh, and I have benefited from all these things. And uh, I was able to uh, obtain this job in Kotayam and I was able to uh, retire from the college uh, as professor and head of the department of English. Uh, thanks to the the attitudes, the sophistication, the interiorization of uh, modernity by Kerala society. Uh, people, they raise the question of caste. I do think there is caste in Kerala, but not as it is practiced in other parts of India. Uh, here, on the surface, you don't find the the manifestations of caste discrimination. Here, you feel that caste is something that operates underground, something that organizes every action of everyone in Kerala but in a very subtly sophisticated manner. So you can uh, live in any place among people of any caste. You can uh, travel with other people. You can sit in the classrooms with students of other communities, other castes, uh, with no risk. But when it comes to the question of uh, uh, distribution of uh, resources and power, especially the question of uh, uh, dignity, the question of honor, the question of esteem, 
you feel that the bells are still at the lowest run. So this is a paradox of progressive modern Kerala. Kerala with its uh, long tradition of the left. A, an example to illustrate this is the fact that in the long tradition of the left, you don't find uh, uh, very many people coming from the Dalit communities emerging as leaders. But today you find uh, a group of Dalit intellectuals emerging in Kerala who have become popular but outside the mainstream left. I will relate the, the question of caste to some of the originary myths about Kerala society because Myths are uh, meanings drained of history and myths are answers without questions. I will refer to the three important myths which are bearing on the caste oppression experienced by Dalits. Again, I would say in a subtly sophisticated, underground, unconscious manner. I refer to the myth related to the Onam festival, the myth related to the origin of Kerala, uh, Kashirama myth, and the myth which the Syrian Christians, uh, they affiliate themselves to, that is the myth of the Sendom's tradition. All the three myths, they speak about gifts, gifts of land to Brahmins. The Syrian Christian myth, it partakes of the other myths, the way of affiliation, affiliating to the, the Parshurama and the Vamana myth. Uh, I consider, I agree with uh, William Logan, who pointed out that, Onam is the celebration of Vaman, not Mahadevi. Uh, have you ever seen people celebrating defeat? So, it is not a celebration of uh, the oppressed people, the lower caste. It is a celebration of the upper caste in defeating Mahadevi. And I don't believe that Mahabali was a historical personage, only a legendary character. Uh, again, coming back to the the gift of uh, land, which is explained by by these three myths. In contemporary Kerala. The greatest problem issue raised by Dalit is the question of land. The most of the Dalits now live in colonies, and the colonies they originated after the Templary Proclamation in 1936. The first such colony was started in Kuruchi the Sajivotamuram colony. And the, the very next year, the Christian converts from Shadu class, the Pulea Paraya communities, they were denied the government uh, prohibitor. Uh, educational concessions to the Christians of scheduled caste origin in 1937. 
So the behind the starting of colonies for Dalits, there is a religious motive also. The religious motive is to to gather these communities, the Dalit communities, in a, a convenient place which makes it it more manageable to be upper class. And if you look at some of the contemporary movements of or some of the important struggles of the Dalits or in Kerala, for example, the the Mutagan land struggle, the Chengara land struggle, the DHRM uh, struggle in uh, Vartala. You find that all these things, all these struggles, they have to do with this marginalization and segregation of Dalits and Adivasis in modern Kerala. And all these they are pivoted on the question of land. They have been denied their right to land and the, the most progressive legislation, <coughs> the Kerala land reforms, it really excluded Dalits from uh, a sharing, a considerable sharing in the land of Kerala. They were given only house sites uh, and they were not given any agricultural land. So, who took the agricultural land? The mm. agricultural land was given to the tenants, the leaseholders. And being uh, slaves, Dalits were denied the right to take land on lease. They were not tenant holders or lease holders. Who are the lease holders, OBC? Uh, the people above OBC, uh, above the Irvas and above communities. Nyers. Nyers. And Syrian Christians. They, they, they were the, the beneficiaries of land crops. And another uh, uh, important legislation, the educational reforms, it benefited the, the dominant communities, especially the Syrian Christians. See, the, the aided schools and aided colleges, most of them are run by the Christian management. The salary is given by the government, the appointments are made by the private management. Uh, one thing we fail to notice is the amount of opportunities the Dalits lose by this progressive democratic uh, uh, legislation. Uh, see, the Dalits kept reservation only in the government institutions, but 80%, almost 80% of the uh, institutions in education are run by the private sector, but they are aided by the government. The, the communist government did try to bring private institutions under Emotional Samarit in their background. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, but later, this experience, the experience of the Vimojana Samarit, it uh, kept the comments from ever attempting to uh, pilot such a legislation.
can you just briefly describe about that legislation attempts and how it was scuttled by which forces did that? Yeah, I, I would say the, the history of uh, modern Kerala is a history, especially the parliamentary history. It is a history between the forces of progress and the forces of status quo. The, the church, the dominant community, the caste organization, all were for a status quo. And it was these forces who, uh, who led the demodian summer against the Congress. Nair, Syrian Catholic. Yeah, yeah. The Nairs, the Syrian Christians, and the the, the, the dominant uh, crust of uh, all communities, except the Dalits. What about Latin Catholics? Uh, again, uh, they are part of the, the established church. And there were uh, progressive, but the church as such, it was uh, against Communists. Latin Catholics are the one of one, the one, one woman who was shot to death, Flory. She was a Latin Catholic. So it was ideological as well as uh, political. So the, these backward communities are ideologically co opted. Yeah. Yeah. Because Latin Catholic community is still very backward. Yeah. So the, the, the church played an important role in organizing, in coordinating the 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 right, the rightist movement. And the left, they never recovered themselves from the shock. So this empiricism is, is something which uh, uh, even today prevents them from. Uh, so do you think that before we merge in a Samaram, left was actually progressive? Uh, they wanted to bring genuine change, but they were defeated by... To, to some extent, I, I, I do believe. Uh, but again, uh, I would say that uh, the left was also uh, subject to, and it was also uh, influenced by the ethics of caste. They couldn't uh, consider Dalits as equals. They couldn't consider Dalits as comrades, only uh, as, a, as people to do service to the party, people to help the party to come up to power. And they were not ready to give power to the, transfer power to the that's why we don't have any towering Dalit leader in Kerala after. Now, can you speculate on what would have happened if Mojana Samaran didn't happen? In the sense, the left has had been successful in passing the education bill in the way they conceived it originally. Would things have... It would have uh, made a difference, a, a, a large difference. Because if uh, all the schools were uh, run by the government and even if the schools were run by the by the private agencies with the provision of reservation thousands of opportunities would have gone to the marginalized it would have made a lot of difference because from today's experience uh, i i know that the Delhi students they lag behind in education, not because they have no brain or uh, they have some uh, uh, lack, lack uh, by birth, but because they don't have the opportunity economic cloud for, they don't have the power to purchase better education, they don't have the yeah, opportunities. And today, uh, thanks to reservation, a, a generation of a new generation of students are coming to the colleges and universities who excel uh, students of other communities. That shows that if you are given opportunities, 
uh, it will make a lot of difference.